Well, hello again, my little ghouls and goblins. Welcome back to my channel. I am getting ready to eat some chicken fries with tater tots. So grab some yummy food and join me. Hey guys, so welcome back to another ASMR mukbang eating show. I already showed you what I have. I have some mayo here for dipping and I also have some Frank's red hot sauce because I love how it tastes with this mixed with the mayo. I have a cup of ice here and today I have some Arizona iced tea. <laughs> There's a lot of light today coming up from the window. Okay, let me use my right hand better. <sighs> okay, I'm just going to get this out of the way for now. Got my little towel here to wipe my hands. And let's get started. Let me mix some of my. So yeah, I have a different setup. I'm using my computer so that way you guys could see the food better. And put some of my hot sauce and mix it in with the mayo. I tried it the other day like this and it was so delicious. Mmm. Mm, oh my god. Mmm. I've been wanting to taste these tater tots. I haven't. Mmm. I haven't had tater tots in the longest. These chicken fries are from Aldi. Mm. Dude, it never fails. I always have to make a mess of myself. Mmm. <laughs> Mm. I love tater tots. I remember to see my <laughs> dipping sauce for it. When I was in high school, oh my god, I used to love when they would serve tater tots for lunch. And with pizza, it was so good. Mmm. You guys should definitely try it someday. Pizza with tater tots is the best. Mm. So these tater tots are not fried. I baked them in the oven. And the chicken fries, I cooked them in the microwave. Mm. These are really good. Okay, so... I have some news. Which is good, but it's a little bittersweet. <laughs> My toddler, Jacob, officially started daycare. So I don't have him at home with me now during the day till like about 2.30. He's in school. Oh my God. I miss my baby so much. I'm so used to having him here with me like... You guys don't understand. I've been a stay-at-home mommy for about 12 years or maybe maybe 10 because 
my son Samuel is 12. And when he was born, I was still working. I would bring him to work with me because I worked for my dad's company. We own a family business. Mm. So, I will bring Samuel with me, my firstborn, who is now 12 years old. And I have my own little office. And I kept him in a playpen in there. And so, I stopped working. My dad. Mm. When the economy got really bad and we entered into this awful recession, um, my dad had to like lay off a whole bunch of people. And My husband David was working with me as well. We both worked at my dad's shop. So pretty much I answered phones, tended to the customers in the re in the cash register, and filed some papers for my dad. So David's job is more important because David, you know, he he does windows. He does screens for the windows he cuts glass for my dad he does mirrors and you know my dad needs some more than he needed me because my dad could always answer the phones himself and whatever so yeah my dad had to let go a whole bunch of people so from that moment on i decided to become a stay-at-home mommy and i raised all my three boys home no daycare, nothing. No babysitter, no nanny. I did it all myself. So when Samuel was about three, which is how old Jacob is now, my toddler, um, we started looking for schools because we knew that soon he would have to start pre-K and to prepare him for it because he was so used to being at home with me. And so he wouldn't, like, once he started school, he wouldn't suffer from, like, um, what do you call it? Separation anxiety. We got him all excited about school and we started him in daycare. So, and he loved it. He was, like, all my kids love being around other children. So that's awesome because they do look forward to going to school. So now... We're doing the same thing with Jacob. Jacob is going to be four in August. So it's time for him to start school. He gets bored here already. I mean, he, pay, he plays with his baby brother. He loves his baby brother. But he needs to interact with other kids his age, you know. And he loves it. Like, at church... Um, we take him to the daycare there during liturgy because we go to a Greek Orthodox church for those of you guys who don't know because in evangelical churches they call it service <laughs> and in Catholic churches they call it mass but in Greek Orthodox Christian churches we call them liturgy. So, during, after we take communion, during liturgy, then the kids are allowed to go to Sunday school or daycare. So, when we take him there, he loves it. He loves playing with other kids, and when it's time to go, he does not want to leave. So, I kind of had a feeling... <laughs> That he was really going to enjoy it. But mommy was going to be a hot mess at home. Missing her baby. <laughs> it wasn't too bad though. I cried just a little bit. 
I shed a few tears the night before because I knew my baby was getting ready to go to school the next day for his first time. <laughs> But it was great, you guys. He had a wonderful time in school. When my mom went to pick him up, he didn't want to leave. And, you know, it's exciting for them because it prepares him for when he's going to start pre-K. Which is actually pretty soon because he's going to be four in August. We are almost in April, May, June, July, August in four months. Wow. So that's going to prepare him for, for uh, pre-K or VPK, how they call it now. Um, but yeah, it's good because he gets to interact with other kids. You know, they play, but they even though it's daycare, they do teach them stuff. They teach them the colors, the numbers, letters, um, shapes, whatever. And, you know, they get their lunch, their snack, and they get nap time. So it's cool. Because at least at home, he wasn't napping anymore. He would literally just, I don't even know how that kid has so much energy. <laughs> He'd wake up, be playing all day, play with his baby brother, have his lunch time, his play time, and all that. But sometimes when he would get really cranky, like, I would have to force him to nap. I'm like, turn everything off. No light, no TV, no nothing. Time to sleep for a little bit. Nap time, because, yeah. But that was rarely, rarely the occasion that I could actually get him to, to nap anymore during the day. But now I guess, you know... See, that's the thing with kids. When they see other kids do stuff, then they want to do it too. So now that he's in daycare, he'll see the other kids nap, and he gets excited about it too, and he naps. So, <laughs> But yeah, you guys, my baby's growing up. It's amazing how fast they grow and how fast time flies by. Like, I can't believe it. And those of you who have been following me since Jacob was born, you have gotten the chance to join in that, you know? To see his milestones, you know? His first steps, all the stuff that I've captured on video since he was born. <laughs> I'm getting teary eyed, you guys. Oh my god. <laughs> my baby, they grow so fast, you know? He was this little tiny preemie when he was born. He was so small. Like, I could literally carry him in, like, in one hand like this and just on my arm. He was born at 34 weeks, and I can't believe he's going to be four years old already. Like, time flies. I remember when I was presenting him to you guys for the first time after I came home from the hospital and I showed him to you guys, and I was like, Jacob was born already, and, and now he's starting daycare, almost at pre-K already. I Time flies, you guys, you know, and, and now I have another baby. <laughs> That you guys get the chance and the privilege to see him grow as well. You know, it's just amazing. So, I have a lot on my plate, you know, because I have a preteen, a toddler. And an infant. Oh my god, you guys. A little of... Well, I was going to say both worlds, but not really both because it's three of them. A little bit of three worlds, you know? I get to experience... And the difference in age is just crazy. I mean, Jacob and Caleb are really... Mm, close in age because when Caleb was born, 
Jacob was still two. He was about to thir turn three. But the age gap between Sam, Samuel, and Jacob is crazy. It's an eight-year difference. Samuel was eight years old when Jacob was born. And you guys, oh my god, Samuel is a good kid, but he could be a brat. Like, he's at that age where he does not want to play with his baby brother. Like, his baby brother, every little thing his baby brother does, it bothers him. You know, like, Jacob, stop! Jacob, leave me alone! Jacob, I'm playing! Jacob, don't bug me! Jacob, stop! Like, everything about him bothers him. Like, sometimes I literally have to tell him, hey, stop, because he's not doing anything. All he's doing is talking. His baby brother talks, it bothers him. Like, I am not looking forward to the teenage years, you guys. Let me tell you that much. <laughs> now I will know what it's like, what I put my mom through. Because <laughs> I was a good kid. I really was. My mom always says she never had any complaints about me as a kid. But I was a spoiled brat. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, when you enter the teenage years, you get so hormonal. And everything bugs you. Like, your parents bug you. You don't want them to call you. You don't want them to send you to do nothing. You just want to be in your own little world. Like, when I was a preteen, when I was a kid growing up, a teenager, the technology that exists now didn't exist back then. So, you know, I was either talking on the phone with my friends or in my room playing with my dolls or whatever, listening to music in my own little world, just playing, you know, and when you hit the teenage years, you just want to be on the phone either with your boyfriend or your friends, and you don't want your parents to bug you, well now, with my son, it's like he's in his own little world, you know, there's technology, his video games, all he cares about is his video games and this and that, so little brother walks in, he turns into a brat. Jacob, what do you want? Leave me alone. Hmm. And he's not even a teenager yet. <laughs> I'm not looking forward to that. And us too. Sometimes when David or I will call him for something, we'll be like, Samuel, he'll be like, what? I'm like, hey, don't you dare give me that attitude, Mr. He knows better than to mess with me. Because I'll punish him. I'll take away video games, everything. Everything that he loves. So don't mess with me. <laughs> I love him, but I'm not raising a disrespectful brat. But he's a good kid. He has a very kind heart. He's very giving. Funny. He loves to play jokes on people. <laughs> he has my personality because he's a... Aquarius like me <laughs> from my three boys he's the only one that shares a zodiac sign with me as I'm Aquarius too um Jacob is Leo <laughs> and Caleb is Gemini oh boy I say oh boy because Gemini's tend to be womanizers <laughs> I know that from experience, because my dad's a Gemini, and my dad was, like, <laughs> bad in his days. My dad was a big-time womanizer. <laughs> mm. And it's, it's funny, because Caleb was born two days after, no, not after, before, two days before my dad's birthday. So my dad is June 9th, and Caleb is June 7th. So that was pretty cool. So now we get to celebrate both birthdays together. But yeah. Whew. So yeah, you guys. That's what's up. <laughs> That's what's been going on lately. A new stage in our lives. A new journey. My babies are growing. <laughs> right before our very eyes. Mm. 
Mm. This is so good. I don't remember when was the last time I had tater tots. And they're good fried because, you know, they have the crunch. But it's not healthy. It's greasier. So I like to bake them. Baked are better. I guess if I would have left it a little longer, they would have gotten crunchier. They do have a little crunch, but on one side. I think because I forgot to, like, turn them over to the other side. So they could have gotten, like, crunchy on both sides. So some little parts are not that crunchy, but it's still good. Mmm. I love me some tater tots. I don't know why these always bring back memories from when I was in high school, you guys. Oh, my God. Like, every time I knew there was pizza and tater tots, that made my day. <laughs> I couldn't wait for lunchtime. those high school days you guys oh my god I remember <laughs> when I was in high school you know when we're in high school we always have our little crush on someone <laughs> and I had a crush on this guy right so during lunch break Every time they showed the pizza with the tater tots, I always wanted more. Because my mom would give me lunch money. I would buy my lunch in the cafeteria at school. And, you know, if you took extra money, you could buy yourself seconds, you know. Whatever you want from the cafeteria. And so I remember that I'd be like, damn, I eat my slice of pizza. And my side of tater tots. <laughs> and I'd be like, damn, I would always sit with my friends. But there was this one friend of mine who was a really good friend. She was like one of my best friends. And we'd, been, we'd be sitting down on lunch and I'd be like, man, I want more tater tots. <laughs> or another slice of pizza with more tater tots. I don't know, you know, it depends if I was hungrier that day than usual. And by the way, I haven't always been a big girl. I was very skinny when I was a kid. And my mom used to battle with me. She had to, like, shove the food down my throat because I wouldn't eat, like, good, you know. And when I was in high school, I was always thin. I was always in, like, well, back then I used to think I was chubby. I'd give anything to weigh that again. <laughs> I was, what, 130s? 140, I think, was the most that I ever reached when I was in high school. Anyway, and I wanted more, but I didn't want to seem like a fat ass, so I didn't want to, like, get up and go buy more food for me, so I'd give the money to my friend. I'd be like, Jackie, <laughs> I'd be like, here, go buy me some more tater tots, or go buy me another slice of pizza, and she'll be like, another one of them. <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, she's like, okay. I'd be like, please, it's embarrassing. I don't want to go by myself, because then, like, the guy I like would be staring at me. I'd be like... I'm here thinking he'll probably be like, oh, what a fat ass. She's going to get more food. <laughs> oh, my God. And, yeah. Those tater tots definitely bring back memories. Like, <laughs> every time I think of tater tots, I think of high school. <laughs> and my... My little dilemma with wanting more and not wanting to get up <laughs> to buy them so my crush wouldn't see me. Why is that, you guys, that when you're a kid or when you're young and you have a crush on someone, you do not want them to see you eat? <laughs> I have, like, the funniest 
stories about that. Like, it's crazy. I never wanted to eat in front of the guys I like. Either a crush or my boyfriend or whoever he was. If I liked him, he ain't going to see me eat. <laughs> Who were to think that I was going to turn into such a fat ass and not care what anybody says or thinks and have my own eating channel. <laughs> no, but seriously, you guys, I remember when I was older already. Um, I was like in my 20s. I was divorced from my first husband. And I was like, Living the single life again, you know, enjoying life. And I used to, I met this guy and we started dating for a while. But that guy was like really into fitness and, you know, I was just fat ass. <laughs> I was, I was thinner and now way thinner. Obviously, I hadn't had any kids yet. The most weight I gained was after I had kids, obviously, but and then I didn't really maintain myself, you know. Obviously, I let myself go, but. <sighs> but when I was dating this guy, he was, like, all into, like, working out. He would go every Saturday and run at the beach, and he would go to the gym, this and that. And I did have a gym membership. I remember I got a gym membership because I wanted to lose weight, like. I was chunky. But I wasn't fat like now, you know? Or as big as now. So anyway. <laughs> I know a lot of people don't like to use the word fat. But hey, reality is I am fat. A lot of people are like, oh, but you look great. I'm like, dude, thanks. But I'm fat. <laughs> Let's speak the truth. Reality is I am fat. <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> So yeah, he was like all into fitness and everything. And I was just doing me, you know. I tried to go to the gym and work out as much as I could. I would drink like three gallons of water a day. Like I was obsessed before I met him because we met online and I wanted, when we met up in person, I wanted to like be thin and in shape. So I, I lost a lot of weight before I met him. I remember... I did the Jenny Craig diet, and in, and in three months, I lost 50 pounds. 50, five, zero. <laughs> okay, that was like the best diet that ever worked for me. But I was really dedicated and motivated, you know, because I was like, oh, I want to meet this guy in person, but I don't want him to see me until I've lost at least some weight, so... Yeah, I had lost a lot of weight before I met him. But anyway, like I said, I wasn't as obsessed as he was with, like, working out on the gym and this and that. So every time we were together, you guys, <laughs> we would go out to eat. Like, I used to be so embarrassed. Like, I did not want to seem like a fat ass, like a pig. So I'd behave, you know. Every time we went out, we went out all I would have was a salad. That shit was torture. Because I'd be fucking starving. I'd be like, there's no way in hell that I'm going to let this guy see me eat a piece of chicken or a plate of pasta or any other thing that's not a salad. <laughs> so I was like, uh-oh. You guys, it was hilarious. Like, I would go out to eat with him. We would have a salad. When he would drop me off on my ass, we'll go fucking running <laughs> to the drive-thru in Taco Bell and stuff my face with Taco Bell. <laughs> And my friend Susan used to hang out with us a lot. And sometimes we would go out like on double dates. Like if she would meet a guy. So I would go with this, you know, with my boyfriend. And she'd be with her date. And we, she was the same as me. And she was thin. She wasn't like chunky like me. She was thin. Back then, like I said, I was chunky. I know I'm fat now, but back then I wasn't that fat. I was just, you know, I was a curvy, thick girl. 
<laughs> but she was kidding. She was, you know, she was perfect. She was fine. She didn't have to lose weight, gain weight, nothing. She was just fine. She was normal. But she had the same issue as me. She could not eat in front of her boyfriend. She was like, hell no. <laughs> so we've been chilling the whole night. Go here, go there, hang out. <laughs> as soon as the night was over, the guys went their own way. Would be in our in my car. She look at me. <laughs> I look at her and she'll be like, "Let's go to Taco Bell." I'm like, yep, Taco Bell. <laughs> we go home and ask for Taco Bell. We'll be like, "Damn, we've been starving all night for these because of these stupid guys." They really. <laughs> <laughs> And as you get older, you don't give a fuck anymore. <laughs> but yeah, why is that? I wonder why that is. I really do. Because I know I wasn't the only kid or young girl who had that dilemma. And I think there's boys out there too who have the same problem, the same... I don't know if I should call it an issue, but uh, it's a dilemma, you know, of not wanting to eat in front of girls or the person that you like. <laughs> Why is it so embarrassing when you're that young? Like, another thing I couldn't stand was when I would be somewhere eating and people would just stare at me. I'd be like, I would feel so awkward. And now I don't care that much. I mean, hello, I have an eating show. I sit here and people watch me eat, so obviously I'm, I don't care, but sometimes it is annoying, because I'll go to a restaurant to eat with David, and sometimes I notice people like stare at you, like, I don't know, they just stare at you eat sometimes for like maybe a few seconds or a few minutes and it's so awkward like like I don't know I could do it in front of the camera and record for you guys and I know that thousands of people are going to watch me or whatever you know And it's not that awkward. It's not as intimidating. But when I go eat out sometimes. It is a bit like. Okay what are you looking at? <laughs> but yeah when we're kids. I don't know. Mm, I'm getting so full right now. I cannot take another bite. There's one chicken. Fry left. And three tater tots, but I can't. I really can't. If I could, I would, but I can't. <laughs> I'm extremely full. I don't even know how many of those I ate. <laughs> wow, this is a pretty long video, you guys. This is the most that I've ever talked <laughs> in a video. I had a lot to say today. I don't know, just reminiscing and having my baby start daycare. This is another stage of our life that we have begun and it's like wow, you know? Feels weird not having him home. What the hell is in my piece of plastic or something? What the heck? I have some purees in the ice box of my freezer for the baby because my mom makes purees for him and she purees like his vegetables and stuff like that all the meals and I don't know I guess I had one in there because I keep them in little Tupperwares like plastic containers and I guess one of the caps broke off a piece and it got mixed with the ice I was like what the hell is would have sucked if I would freaking swallowed that. <laughs> but yeah, 
But anyway, yeah, you guys, you know, it's amazing because they grow so fast. But, you know, it was important already for him to start. He, he needs that. You know, obviously, you guys only get to see, like, a few minutes of my day, you know, when I make these videos. But you're not here to see 24-7, you know, with my kids and our lives. And I don't know, like, I used to vlog before, but I really don't have much time to do all that anymore. Maybe I will consider it in the, in the near future. Because a lot of people were like, oh, you should start doing vlogs. And, like, I, I love vlogging. I used to do it a lot back then. But, you know, I didn't have Jacob. I didn't have Caleb. I only had Sam. And I would find time to vlog because I only had to take care of one baby. But now it's it's harder on me, you know. And you guys don't get to see 24-7 of my day. Like I said, I only record a few minutes a day. And that's why it's stupid when people judge and talk crap about my videos without even knowing. Because I know a lot of people make comments like, Oh, her kid is always in the room locked up when she records. Okay, first of all, I record a few minutes out of my day. You're not here to see 24 hours a day of what I do with my kids. I spend time with my kids. I dedicate them time. I feed them. I take care of them. I bathe them. I do everything for my kids. And my kids are very well take care of, taken care of. And it speaks for itself because everybody that always sees pictures of Jacob and all my kids, they're always cheesing. In every picture, Jacob is always like, big ass smile from ear to ear you know a kid that wouldn't be in a happy home life would never be smiling as much as my kid does so all those people that talk crap obviously are not I mean their opinions don't matter anyway you know but I'm just like making it clear because I'm not I know a lot of people like to judge and talk shit but you know what I do with their opinions I wipe my ass with it because <laughs> their opinions are irrelevant but like I said I only record, I only take a few minutes out of my day to record, and as soon as the camera turns off, it's back to being mommy, you know, it's, while, when Jacob was here before he started daycare, while I was recording, he'd either be on his high chair having his lunch, or he'd be in his little play area in my room, and <clears throat> playing or watching cartoons or whatever, so yeah, a few days out of the, out of 24 hours that there is in a day taking a few minutes for me to do my videos is not going to hurt my child so those who talk are stupid because I don't record my life I don't vlog 24 7 so it's impossible for you guys to really see into my life and really see what goes on at home when I turn that camera off so <clears throat> I'm a damn good mommy. My kids are very well taken care of. They're very happy boys. And I couldn't be more blessed. I couldn't ask for more. So but there's a lot of envious, jealous people out there. So unfortunately, they live miserable lives and always find something to nitpick about your videos. But nobody knows my life like me and my loved ones. And that's as much as I allow you guys to see. And the rest is up to me if I want to let you see it or not. So, <laughs> all right, you guys. So, with that said, oh my god, yeah, this video was so long, but I had a lot to talk about, and I hope you guys enjoyed all the stories I shared with you guys. <laughs> and, as always, I will see you in my next video. And, you guys, I know I haven't had paranormal stories in a while inside my mukbangs. I know a lot of people like the paranormal stories inside the mukbangs, but it's been, you know, crazy and... It's not always going to be paranormal stories, although I do love paranormal. But trust me, there's much more stories coming your way. And I know I've been doing separate videos on, like, haunted dolls and stuff that has to do with the paranormal. But there's no eating involved. And I, lo I know a lot of people like to hear about the creepy stories while we eat. So I'll, I'll continue to do that, you know. I just like to spice it up a little bit, change it up from time to time. And just bring variety to you guys, you know. That's... That's how I am, so people don't get bored. <laughs> Alright, you guys, so with that said, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got to eat some delicious, yummy food along with me. And as always, I will see you guys in my next video. Alright, guys, bye-bye.